After years of investigation, the US authorities have finally sued the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance. I'm sitting down with our head of research, Matt, to talk about what this all means and how it impacts the market. Maybe you can kick us off, Matt. You've made a post to members on the platform. Maybe you could fill us in on what this all means for the largest cryptocurrency exchange. Yeah, sure thing, Nick. This Binance news is one of those sort of drop everything moments as we've had many sort of in the past six months in the crypto industry, it seems. But, you know, it was, it was even on local news here in Australia. I saw it on ABC, Channel 9, everywhere, all covering, you know, Binance, as you said, world's largest crypto, even even company really, exchange, getting sued by one of the big regulators in the US or the big agencies. So they're sort of look after the commodities market and they're sort of accusing Binance of sort of violating like several US laws. It was sort of a long filing or a complaint as they call it. But sort of the important thing here to understand is, you know, there were three entities. So Binance itself has about over 120 corporate entities globally. They, this was for three that they charge in, in particular, as well as the CEO. That's uh, CZ as he's commonly known as. And it, it was significant because yes, it's the world's largest crypto exchange. And it sort of ends to your point, as you said, several years of investigation by US authorities. This is, yes, one agency and you know, we might get to that a bit later about what could be to come. But it's important to understand because you know, Binance has been sort of skirting this very fine line of like not wanting to be under sort of the purview of US regulators and authorities. But they've also arguably, at least in the authority standpoint, not done a great job of sort of, you know, gating or preventing US users from interacting with their business, which is not registered. Yeah, and they've got I know Binance US as a way to offer some of their crypto services to these US residents. Uh, I think the big po point there is that I think big Binance, I think controls about 90% of crypto total volumes, including derivatives mm. markets. So it's a huge part of the crypto ecosystem. Maybe you can get into what this means for crypto overall in dealing with potential Binance you know, allegations and the upcoming court cases. Yeah, sure. Because I get up on my screen here, just how sort of broke it down for all members. You know, it was just a, a bit of explaining, yeah, high, high level sort of what, what it meant. But I think overall for, for the crypto market, um, uh, even just the crypto industry, like this is going to be significant because really, yes, for like the sort of market structure of exchanges and, and sort of the power sort of dynamics with, you know, the likes of Coinbase is probably an example of one that would really like this to go against finance. Mm. Uh, but you're, for your everyday user, and like just an investor in crypto, I, I think it's almost been, it's, it's easy to sort of think that this is like a very, very, you know, scary thing. But at the end of the day, like it doesn't really have anything to do with, with Bitcoin or Ethereum or all the stable coins. This is more to do with just like the, you know, the compliance of one particular industry participant, notably a, an extremely large one, as you said, 90% of volumes. Uh, but for the crypto industry, it more is just going to be hinging on could get some you know, legal precedent if it does go to court. It could be something that could really help shape you know, future regulations of crypto, particularly in the US. Uh, but for yeah, the average day, everyday user, I don't think it, it, it's as much to be concerned about in the short term. Um, and then we saw the market sort of you know, get very spooked after this. Dropped about three, three percent or so Bitcoin did after this news. But here we are a few days later and it's kind of rebounded and actually surpassed the prices where it was beforehand. But I do think there is some, some, you know, sign of ways that this could actually get a bit worse. Yeah, maybe we can dive into, I guess, how we're expecting any further action to hit the market. I know uh, a lot of people have speculated that a lot of these government agencies will often work together. Uh, this was the, FTFC, am I correct? Um, the Commodities mm, Trading yeah. Commission uh, specifically. And I think it was a civil suit. Uh, so maybe if things could get even worse, I'm not sure if you share a similar sentiment, if other agencies start to get involved, like the Department of Justice, and you see criminal uh, allegations against Binance and CZ, I feel like that could be a major turning point mm. in the markets that you know, that may spook it even more. Do you sort of have any feelings of where we're going next? Yeah, I kind of, um, you know, spoke this about a bit later in my post. And I think that is probably one thing that the everyday sort of crypto investor probably doesn't un understand or have a, you know, a big appreciation about, which is understandable. But, you know, this isn't sort of over, like to your point, 
There's been years of investigations. Multiple media outlets have reported that the likes of the Department of Justice which is sort of like the big daddy of all the US sort of <laughs> authorities. Like when they come after you, like, you know, you're going to have a bad time sort of thing. It's there would be a, from a criminal standpoint as opposed to civil, as you said. Uh, SEC, so security sort of watchdog, they could also, you know, get involved with going after Binance. Even the IRA, they, you know, recently came after Kraken at the same time as the SEC. So to your point, these agencies are very, you know, interoperable to steal a word from, from blockchain. <laughs> they talk a lot between each other and, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if they all did target, you know, Binance at the same time. It is a possibility that we have to keep in mind. If that happened, look, it, it could like, I think drive, you know, spook the markets and cause, you know, a bit of a sell off, uh, which is what we saw earlier. So it's that compounding effect. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's possibly how it could get worse. Not to mention what you've been really harping on about a lot and about just crypto regulation and sentiment about sort of law enforcement in the US. Their sentiment over the space at the moment is, you know, far from ideal. So not to mention sort of the broader crypto industry and market regulation. Um, it might not turn out too well for Binance, but it's all just unknown at this standpoint, but it's worth keeping in mind and something that I think a lot of people sort of underappreciate. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can, um, is there anything, I guess, practical, uh, maybe any users of Binance can do mm -hmm. in terms of, I know we've been harping on a lot about, you know, that idea of, of keeping your, 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 you know, your keys, your coins and making sure that you self custody well, uh, especially, yeah. I know I saw a lot of outflows from Binance in the last few days. Uh, I don't think it's constituted any bank run at the moment, but I know, imagine a situation where, the charges are increased and perhaps Binance is in a worse situation, then we could see people really start to flood to the exchange to perhaps withdraw their coins. Uh, mm. I think that's a, a pretty, would you agree that's a pretty common one there just to make sure to take your coins off Binance and just do best practice security really? Like I know we harp on a lot, like don't keep the majority of your cryptocurrency mm. on an exchange uh, because of that's, that definitely has has the potential, I think, if things get worse. Yeah, yeah. So, as long as you're not, you know, like a trader, like which not many of us are really. Some of us probably think that we are, but we're, <laughs> we're not. They're probably the only ones who would have, you know, an argument for having funds on an exchange. But for everyone else, it's that old, like, you know, public bathroom analogy, you, you, as, as we sort of talk about and others in the industry, you go in, do your business. So in this case, the exchange will be buying and selling tokens. And then you just get out of there, put it back to your own custody in your own wallet, such as like a, um, a ledger, you know, device. Uh, so that's sort of, you know, the way to think about it. Yes. Is it dangerous to use Binance in the coming weeks? I would say like, not really, nothing's really changed very short term, but you know, it doesn't mean you should just still comfortably have them on an exchange. In my opinion, um, if you're very, very just like nervous and you don't trust yourself with self custody, you know, look, it's up to you in terms of your personal preference, just so long as you're aware of the dangers of mm -hmm. having your funds on exchange, such as what happened to FTX like last year. And, you know, it's an extremely small possibility, this this example where there could be, you know, maybe an, an action from, you know, a court that orders, you know, Binance to just freeze all of its operations. Mm -hmm. Again, I would think that would be, I would, struggle to imagine that happening, but it's a possibility. And, you know, you might not actually be able to log in to take out your assets, for example, particularly if you're more relevant, maybe to a US citizen. Mm. So yeah, look, it's, I think another reminder of just how at risk, there's risk involved with using exchanges and even the largest one in the world by far has been targeted here. And, you know, that could just be the first, the first one to fall in terms of mm. you know, enforcement action against finance. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I saw a, a final point to your post there that, that, that I kind of appreciated and thought was interesting was uh, they actually called out Ethereum and, you know, uh, Litecoin as commodities. So we're sort mm. of seeing this battle between these regulators that sort of can't agree. One's saying one's securities and not, not willing to put their neck out. The others are calling them. So another little bit of... Uh, information there and amongst the chaos i think of how scattered a lot of these regulators are and they yeah. seem to be vying for the similar fish and everyone's sort of getting in their way that's sort of how i'm seeing it 
Yeah, no, it's, it's not a great picture at the moment, especially yeah, in the US. And like, yes, I did just say about five minutes ago that they all work together in terms of you know enforcement action. Yet there is still this sort of power struggle, certainly in this case between the commodities regulators and the CFTC, as well as the securities agency, the SEC. Those two in particular have been going on for years now in terms of trying to control the you know, authority over sort of the local mm-hmm. crypto industry or in the US, as well as you know, authority over regulating, I guess, the assets that are traded or the commodities that are traded on those exchanges. So it's a, it was sort of a nice, well, not a nice, but just another side story mm-hmm. of this massive event that happened. And I'm sure mm-hmm. we're going to continue to see headlines over the coming weeks and maybe even months and well, even years, as I said, as an example, it could be years if this does end up going to court. Um, Look, we'll continue to cover it when there's major developments. But yeah, it's um, yet another sort of example of how busy this start to our 2023 has been. Uh, yeah. And the cleanup sort of continues after this uh, tumultuous uh, 2022 for crypto. Yeah, thanks, Matt. That was a really good conversation. And I no doubt expect we're going to be here talking again about any more finance news that comes yeah. out in the following weeks, as we know crypto is such a crazy space. So uh, anybody who wanted to check out this post, please head to the Collective Shift platform. Uh, you can view Matt's full rundown and Team Insight below will be linked. Uh, for those non-members, we do have a 15-minute strategy call with our CEO, Ben. If that's something that you're interested in and to check out the membership, just head to collectiveshift.io forward slash strategy. Thank you.